Nomenclature of epoxides. So our method for making epoxides is using peroxy acids. And one thing that should be noted is that the reaction to generate epoxides using a peroxy acid should be done in an anhydrous solvent And usually our solvent is CH2Cl2, so this epoxide reaction requires anhydrous, non-nucleophilic solvent, I'm missing some L's there, and that is usually uh, what we call dichloromethane. And dichloromethane, if you see it in a reaction, it is never going to be anything more than a spectator in that reaction. It is simply there as a way to keep molecules dissolved. So for the naming of epoxides, you unfortunately have to know common names as well as IUPAC names. For the IUPAC names, we usually look number the main chain and then at the epoxide position we state the carbon numbers for the epoxide and call it an epoxy um, butane or an ep depending on how long the main chain is. So for this example circled in blue we have a four carbon chain a butane and we have an epoxide group between at carbons one and two so it's an epoxy butane. Your book uses several terms for epoxides interchangeably, um, notably ethylene oxide, which is also called oxyrain. Um, those are two terms that you will see very often, and so you should understand what they are asking when they use those terms. Ethylene oxide and oxyrain, that is the simplest epoxide, which we would call epoxyethane. So these names are used interchangeably by your book. Okay, so um, if we had a three carbon epoxide, it would be a propylene oxide. It could be um, propyl oxyrain. It could be um, 1,2 epoxy propane. So you need to be aware of the different ways that they are going to name them. I am not going to ask you to name an epoxide on an exam, but you should be able to understand a problem that says, um, how could you produce oxyrain from, ethylene, from eth ethene and MCPBA? And so then you have to know, well, what is oxyrain? If they ask me how I produce oxyrain, what is oxyrain? Okay. Oh, this is my favorite reaction. Oh, yay. Okay, hold on. I'm going to pause. So ozonolysis is my favorite reaction. And we are not going to learn the mechanism for this reaction, but you are going to learn um, I'm, and what we're going to focus on is the method of determining the product, okay? So I have a methodology for you to follow in determining what the product will be. Ozonolysis is using ozone as a reagent, O3, which is an allotro a naturally occurring allotrope of oxygen. And this reaction must be carried out at minus 78 degrees. So it's very exothermic and we have to cool it to avoid explosions, basically. Um, the second step of the reaction is um, a quenching process. So this requires either zinc and acetic acid or dimethyl sulfide as for step two. Um, 
so what is the methodology for this reaction? So if we have an alkene and they give us the reagents for ozonolysis, what you're going to do is you're going to draw the starting material in the position of the product, but draw it with a super long double bond. So let's draw it in, for example, blue and draw it with a super long double bond as suggested. Okay, so there's our super long double bond. Next, erase the middle and add oxygen at both ends. So since I can only erase the entire line when I'm in this uh, presentation mode, we're gonna escape and I'm gonna pick my small eraser so I can erase the middle of the bond. So after I've drawn my super long double bond in the product position, I'm going to erase the middle of that bond. Okay. And then step three, add oxygen at both ends. That is the final products of that this alkene forms in reaction with ozone. And that is two aldehyde, or two equivalents of aldehyde. So these aldehydes are identical. They are um, ethyl aldehyde or ethanol um, would be the appropriate name. Two carbon aldehyde, ethanol. And so we're going to look at some more examples of this. I think that this is maybe one of the easiest ones to do. Um, but we'll also look at where people can get tricked on this reaction and accidentally draw the wrong product. So one of the main things that I see students doing for is uh, incorrectly is when they draw an ozonolysis reaction with a cyclic alkene. So for a cyclic alkene, you would perform the same basic um, steps that I already described. You're going to draw a super long double bond in the product, then erase the middle of the product, double bond, and put oxygens at both ends. The problem with cyclic alkenes that I see students doing most often is that they erase across the entire molecule. So for example, they erase in this way so that they also break this bond. That is incorrect. Don't break any bond except for the pi bond. So let's draw long, short, short, short. Okay, so now this pi bond is super long compared to the other single bonds. Um, step two, erase the middle of the bond. Step three, place an oxygen at both ends. So now we have to name our molecule, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So it's a, um, it's a hexa. And then at carbon one, we have an aldehyde. At carbon six, we have an aldehyde. This is a diol. It has two aldehydes. 
So it's a hexane diol. Whoops, that should be an E. And we need the carbon number, so one six hexane diol for dialdehyde. And if you want, you can redraw your product to reflect that you have simply a six carbon dialdehyde. in the zigzag formation. Um, so that would also be an acceptable uh, product answer. But whether you draw it as I did um, on the top, where I drew the original ring and raised the middle bond and put oxygen on both sides, or I draw it as a zigzag um, structure, these are the same thing. The difference is simply rotation about the single bonds. Alright, so a little bit about ozonolysis. The intermediate for ozonolysis is a special um, intermediate called an ozonide. Um, it involves a five-membered ring that contains three oxygens as ring atoms. And you do not need to know the mechanism by which the ozonide forms and or the mechanism by which the ozonide breaks down into the corresponding ketone or aldehyde products. But ozonolysis will yield a um, ketone if the pi carbon ha is bonded to two carbons, or the what we call the vinyl carbon, the sp2 carbon of the alkene is bonded to two carbons, then we get a ketone. If the sp2 carbon of the alkene is bonded to only one other carbon, then we produce an aldehyde. So ketones and aldehydes, um, remember the difference between ketones and aldehydes, both are in the larger functional group category of carbonyl groups. Um, a ketone is a carbonyl carbon that has two bonds to carbon, and an aldehyde is a carbonyl carbon that has one bond to carbon, or at least one bond to hydrogen. So an aldehyde could be either a simple aldehyde, like formaldehyde, which contains only one carbon. So it has at least one bond to hydrogen. And then um, most of our aldehydes, every other aldehyde that has more than one carbon is going to be um, have one bond to hydrogen and one bond to carbon. So here's our carbonyl carbon and a ketone, the carbonyl carbon, two bonds to carbon. In an aldehyde, the carbonyl carbon has at least one bond to hydrogen, at least one bond to hydrogen. And if it has more than one carbon in the molecule, then that aldehyde will have one bond to carbon and one bond to hydrogen. Or the carb, yeah, the carbonyl carbon will have one bond to hydrogen, one bond to carbon. Okay, looking at ozonolysis, some more examples, okay? So, we break the double bond and put oxygens on both sides. So on the product, we would draw an exaggerated long double bond, erase the middle, put oxygens on both sides, and we get our two products. But notice now, okay, remember I said, if our vinyl carbon has two bonds to carbon, then it forms a ketone. Here's our ketone, okay? If our vinyl carbon has one bond to carbon, then it will be an aldehyde. So there's our aldehyde. So that's your example, okay? So now what about the next one? Look at your two vinyl carbons.
we have the ring vinyl carbon and the vinyl carbon outside of the ring, yellow and green. As soon as I draw one, it erases the other one. Okay, we get them both. Okay, so looking at the yellow vinyl carbon, how many bonds to carbon, how many bonds to an sp3, or how many single bonds to carbon does the yellow carbon have? The answer is two. Two single bonds to carbon from yellow. And then also from the green carbon, there are two single bonds to carbon. Okay. Oh, ah, I'm getting a little bit frustrated with the software sometimes. Okay, how many times do I have to say a red pen? L. Oh. Two single bonds to carbon from the yellow carbon. Also, two single bonds to carbon from the green carbon. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. This is a disaster. Highlighter. Finally. So, from both yellow and green, we have two single bonds to carbon. And so on the middle of the page reaction, we should only have as our product ketones, a five membered ring ketone and a three membered and a three chain carbon ketone. And the names would be cyclopentanone and um, two propanone for our two ketones. Okay, so then we have our last reaction on the page. CH3, CH2, CH2, CH, double bond CH2. So I would have uh, four carbons and an aldehyde and then formaldehyde. So in this case, both of the double bond carbons have at least one bond to hydrogen. And that means that in the product, they're going to have at least one bond to hydrogen. So they'll both be aldehydes. Because neither of the vinyl carbons on the last example have more than one bond to carbon. Okay, so then in red, I've drawn another um, reaction. If I draw this bond and this bond in an exaggerated length, what I would get would be um, this molecule, this dialdehyde, ethane dialdehyde, and I would also produce two molecules of formaldehyde from cutting this bond I would have a one carbon double bond, C double bond O. If I cut this bond, I would have a one carbon C double bond O. So I get two equivalents of formaldehyde and one equivalent of the dialdehyde. Um, another example, this is something that I have seen on the ACS exam, although your book doesn't cover it, is the reaction of an alkyne with ozon through the same reagents of ozonolysis. So if we have an alkyne, CH3, CH2, C, triple bond C, CH2, CH3, and it reacts by ozonolysis, you can perform the same general uh, mechanism, drawing the exaggerated triple bond, but instead of adding just one oxygen at the end of the triple bond, you're going to take the triple bond and turn it into one double bond and one single bond. And that will be one double bond to O, one single bond to O for each carbon 
to give two carboxylic acid products. Okay, so here's the uh, more exaggerated or more cl clearly written 1,3-butadiene ozonolysis reaction. I show, I drew the exaggerated double bond, then I erased the middle and put an oxygen at both ends. So this is just showing you that by my method, the answers that I gave on this page, the dialdehyde and the two equivalents of formaldehyde is the same answer on this page. Dialdehyde and two equivalents of formaldehyde. Okay. Other examples, um, this molecule, this, um, what this is, is a fatty acid. If this fatty acid were to undergo ozonolysis at each double bond, we've drawn what the product would be. So drawing this same product with exaggerated double, long, exaggeratedly long double bonds at, at each position and then erasing the middle of the double bond and putting oxygen on both sides, we make all of these molecules. So this one alkene produces one, two, three, four, five unique products. Well, actually produces um, five molecules, but only three of them are unique products because this dialdehyde is equal to this dialdehyde is equal to this dialdehyde. So we make um, one equivalent of this aldehyde, one equivalent of this aldehyde, and three equivalents of the dialdehyde. Another example, uh, carbon with two bonds to carbon and a single bond to carbon. We make these two, um, acetone and ethanol. Um, we have a disubstituted pi bond. We get these two molecules for our products. So I hope that um, when you get to ozonolysis on the homework, you'll be able to clearly indicate what the product will be. All right. Um, one of the things that you're going to be expected to do from organic chemistry is to take the product of a reaction and determine what the starting material is. And ozonolysis is a good place to start that. So given the products of ozonolysis, um, getting back to, well, what was the starting material? And so for drawing the products, uh, uh, the reactant of an ozonolysis reaction, my goal would be to align, draw the double bond oxygens facing each other work backwards. Draw the double bond oxygens facing each other. Erase both oxygens. Connect the pi bonds into one and turn them into one pi bond. And then redraw the product with a shorter pi bond so that you can get what the starting alkene was.